Hi everyone, we are back for this month's monthly book review video, and this time we will be looking at these two amazing artists, Henry Osawa Tanner and John Singer Sargent. Um, I'm super excited to get into these books with you guys, um, they're really great ones, so let's just go ahead and get started. Alright, so we are going to start with this book on Henry Osawa Tanner. Um, apologies if you can hear cars, I've switched location today, um, but it should be alright. So, this book on Henry Osawa Tanner, I believe, was published for an exhibition um, on his work in, uh, in like the 90s, I think. Um, the beginning is mostly a biography, kind of like a short biography, and then a chronology and a list of his exhibitions. So, um, so it's pretty interesting, lots of uh, information there. Um, then what I love about this book is it breaks his life and work down all chrono chronologically. So you're kind of seeing from the earliest to the to the latest work that he did. So it's a really beautiful book. If I had any complaints about it, it would be that the prints are not larger. Um, they often are kind of reduced to smaller little ones, but um, they're still good quality. So that is nice at least. Um, to get into Henry Saw Tanner, he was born in 1859. He died in 1937. He, um, he trained under Thomas Aikens at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. Sorry about that. Um, which was very uh, interesting because he, he did actually, he faced a lot of um, prejudice in his early training. Um, he was an African American painter and um, obviously he faced a lot of racial prejudice in his time, so um, especially in his early education. Um, what's really inspiring about him is he actually ca overcame not only that, but um, illness and um, his parents' initial uh, disapproval for his uh, chosen career path. Um, and so he uh, kind of overcame all of that to, to become pretty successful. And um, he uh, his father was actually a minister, so that I think kind of can ex help explain um, why so many he did so many religious paintings throughout his life. Um, you know, there were really uh, some really remarkable paintings. He, um, I believe, the book quotes it as uh, I might be paraphrasing here. Um, the book says he was uh, known for his uh, biblical allegories, in which he could. Uh, in which he could confront the plight of underprivileged uh, people. And, uh, I just thought that was pretty interesting. Sorry, I'm going to thought here. <laughs> so, it was really interesting. He actually, um, he actually did, uh, he was the superintendent of Sunday school um, while he lived in the States for a while. Um, but he did actually, um, and there's a really great quote um, of his uh, saying that he could not uh, fight prejudice and paint at the same time. Um, so he moved to Paris, which uh, was pretty interesting. And he, he uh, pursued more training in Paris. I forget where he went to school there, but he uh, he lived and he painted there. I believe it was in the Hugh Ramsey book, um, though I could not find a correlation in this one, so I can take that uh, or leave it. But I believe in a previous book video, um, one of the books that I've read on uh, he Ramsey. He they were. It was said that he was actually neighbors with uh, Henry Osawa Tanner and Frederick Friesk. So it's pretty interesting. But um, yeah, so he ended up working and living in Paris um, for much of his life. I do believe he came back to the States um, every so often. You know, it, it, whenever I was reading the um, chronology of his life, you know, it, it did have quite a few trips back and forth to the States. So he, it, was, it was pretty interesting. Um, yeah, so it's a very good book. You'll note he's an impressionist painter, um, of course, if you haven't uh, gotten that from his work already. Um, but he um, he just ended up becoming very successful. Um, both him and Sargent, actually, because they lived in very in a very similar time, born a few years apart, and dying like a, a almost a, dec a decade apart. Um, he, they both exhibited at the Paris Salon, um, so it's kind of interesting that their works would be hanging in the same time period, um, if not even at the same time. So, 
It's a lovely book. I do wish um, there are more books on him. I don't know how they compare. Um, I do. I am very happy with the print quality in this one. Um, it's really nice. I love that it includes drawings. Love that it includes the student work. That's all very. Um, it's very thorough, and it's really well written. I have not read it cover to cover, but I have read sections of it, and it's really, um, really well written and researched. And it's a very thorough look at his life, um, which is always, always exciting. Um, but yeah, but that is that book. All right. Now this one is a much more recently published book. Um, I was fortunate enough to see the the exhibition that this book was um, published for at the Morgan Library in New York last year, um, before every, before all the shutdowns and everything. Um, but so it's a really gorgeous book. Um, it's definitely much more print heavy. Um, there's some there's like some there's like a biograph a biographical note and some uh, some information in here and it is quite um it's written by Richard Orman who I do believe is a distant mm, descendant relative person <laughs> to Sargent so um, I've heard him speak at Portrait Society before but it was, it was quite a few years ago now um, and so it's very well researched very very well written um, a wonderful book here's some photos of Sargent in his studio um, it's always very interesting but the images in this book I mean they're gorgeous <laughs> um, the the exhibit was amazing in person I, I do hope as many of you were able to see it as possible but if not you you can purchase this book and I believe every single drawing that was in the exhibit is in this book which is really nice um, but yeah so Sargent he was uh, born in 1856 so again only a few years before uh, Henry Osawa Tanner, and he died in 1925. So it's pretty interesting. Here's a little chronology and then catalog. Um, so he, of course, m many of you know Sargent, so <laughs> I know this will be a lot of redundant information, but um, just in case you don't, he was very successful in his lifetime. Um, his reputation was, of course, nearly ruined by the famous Madame X painting, uh, which is currently in the Met. and. It was very scandalous. Her sleeve was off her shoulder, and or her strap was off her shoulder, and it just was not uh, not well received by the public. <laughs> so he, uh, so but he's. Uh, it was interesting when reading the um, some of the information in this book. He uh, his reputation actually was saved by uh, some American patrons, who kind of rescued his reputation and flooded him with portrait commissions, and um, and so he ended up. You know, kind of getting back into the positive spotlight. So, he, it was interesting though. He was actually, he was born to um, American expatriates, so he, he often really didn't live in the States. But, um, but another interesting thing I found out was that uh, when World War I broke out, he did end up spending most of his time in the States and he was working on, um, again, murals and commissions and such. But, um, but he, ended up doing these uh, charcoal portraits, um, I learned this in a guided tour of the exhibit, because he was tired of painting these grand portrait commissions for the upper class, so he ended up saying, I will do um, these charcoal portraits, and that's, that's kind of all, that's all you get. I will paint, I will do these gorgeous charcoal portraits for you guys, um, and I will not paint you anymore, but, um, so it's really interesting, he started doing that, he, I believe he switched to doing just charcoal portraits in 1907, um, so to kind of give you an idea. It was, it was, he was, you know, quite well established in his career at that point and could kind of get away with it. Um, but yeah, so he's, uh, it, the image quality in this book, I probably have already said it, but it really is amazing. Um, a great book to kind of draw from. There is a much cheaper book on his portraits, it's really tiny. Um, and uh, maybe not as good of quality, but if you're looking for an affordable option, you can get a book of his charcoal portraits um, with that as well. But yeah, that's that one. It does have this little interesting thing about the frames and stuff in the end, but you know, as artists, we're, we're concerned with what's in the frame. <laughs> so. All right, that's that one. I hope you enjoyed that book review video. As always, let me know if you have any requests for specific artists or books, and uh, I'll see you next time.